folks. Uh, welcome back to the shop. I haven't done a video in uh, quite some time. Been uh, real busy. Uh, but anyways, wanted to get back uh, tonight and show you one of my favorite tools. Um, I have lots of favorite tools and it's really hard to pick on. It's kind of like uh, trying to pick a favorite kid or something. Uh, but anyway, I'm sorry Felipe. You're just not my favorite anymore. In fact, you probably never were. I hope you can deal with that. I still love you, though. He's upset. Anyway, sorry. Let me tell you about a router. No, not this kind of a router. I really don't like this thing. Uh, in fact, to be perfectly honest, I haven't used this in years. Uh, and I do mean years. Uh, it's really dusty. Looks like I was cutting heart pine probably the last time. Anyway, it's really noisy. Chucks a bunch of stuff. Doesn't even adjust very well. I really don't like it. Uh, no, what I want to talk to you about tonight is the uh, original router. This one is my Stanley. Yeah, it's prettier than my face. <laughs> Stanley 71 and a half. Yeah, I think Stanley half. I'll show you what the half means in just a second and show you why this is way cooler than this. Okay, guys, uh, here it is, the Stanley 71 and a half. Let me turn it around for you. Um, you can see it just a little bit better that way. Um, this, the main difference in the 71 and a half and the 71 um, was that the 71 had what's called an open throat. So instead of having this piece come all the way across here uh, flat like that, then it kind of had an open space in here. The idea was that you could see what you were doing better and see where you were working. Um, I found in in uh, actual use, I like this better. I've never used the other one, but you need more room to register this. Um, I want to show you this. Um, this is the Audell's. I doubt you can even see the cover. Audell's Carpenter and Builder's Guide. This thing was originally published in the 20s, the 1920s, and um, this particular edition is from the 1940s as a reprint. Uh, number one there. There you go. And in here. It shows you a real nice um, view of the router plane right here, along with some other specialty planes. And what it's showing right here, uh, and maybe I can get the camera moving a little closer. What it's showing right there, there's your 71 right there. See the open part of the throat here in the front? Right there. That's what it's talking about. And then over here is a 71 and a half that I have. Um, and it's kind of just showing some different uses for it. Um, it was famously called a hag's tooth because this sort of hangs down beneath here. I don't know if you can see kind of where that blade hangs down underneath there. Sort of like an old woman's tooth or a hag's tooth. There were wooden examples of this from the 1700s and maybe even a little earlier. Um, its entire purpose is to cut something beneath the level of the wood that it's at. So to make a smooth surface underneath there. It's a joinery tool. Um, and originally it would have come, this one, probably would have come with one to three blades, depending. The one that came with it, I was fortunate, um, was this one here. This is about a half inch blade. And yes, these are boogers to sharpen. You just kind of have to, um, if this was a sharpening stone here, you just kind of have to hold it on the side and go back and forth like this and just hope for the best. There's not a good way to do this. Um, some of them would come with a quarter inch wide blade like this one here. I was able to find this one. Later examples, you'll find the early examples like this one here. Notice there's only a one notch here. Let's zoom in on all these. Um, so, you know, right here you see there's just a single notch. There's no notch on this side at all. This is the earlier example. Uh, and I don't remember exactly how old mine is. Uh, I will look that up. The, uh, you can tell by the dates here and I'll uh, give that for you. Later examples had this all the way around the top there, see there? And what that meant is that you could mount this thing in really any angle that you wanted to within the plane a little bit more. So it makes these a little bit more versatile. They also had a scale on the side. There you can see that. That's, I have found to be very not useful. <laughs> um, just use a ruler on the bottom. And um, then there was the one that's in here. I'm not going to take it out because I've got it set actually for a project I'm working on. This one's shaped like a plow. Um, you notice it has two cutting surfaces. 
and that works across grain very very well um, this particular one is at this point very 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 sharp and on the bottom this one had a screw that you could take that little piece off and try to sharpen it a little bit better people might would make a little stick to mount it on or something Lee Valley actually makes something now specifically for that purpose because they started making these things and this is one of their blades I bought for guitar making for doing the rosettes um, once I cut the the shoulders with my special tool that I made you can go back and use this little teeny tiny one also with the all around to uh, put in there and do it now, I'll show you a few more things on the router plane itself and I'll show you one thing you can do with it so on the router plane itself there's a couple of ways to work this thing um, you see right up here there's an adjustment wheel that adjusts the depth here of the blade how far below the plate it goes um, and you have to loosen this screw thumb screw back here and then it will go up and down as you turn this screw you can also mount it back here to use it in a bullnose position so you can mount it on the back and you see this V groove here uh, these things are square and they fit into the V groove you know a bit like this here uh, where you can see they would go in there so basically you just turn this collar around completely 180 degrees around and you can mount the blade on the back um, with the blades that have this collar all around you can mount them sideways um, it works better in the back you can mount them sideways that's only really only useful if you're running short of space uh, and you notice a couple of screw holes on this one right here those are tapped uh, well they're not tapped but they're just um, countersunk screw holes so if you wanted to mount it to a much larger board and have a larger surface for your router plane you could as long as you had a hole drilled in the middle here for this and then you put some screws in where these holes are and bada bang you got it so again this is a Stanley 71 and a half um, I will put the dates of manufacture on this one down in the uh, comment section or down below in the description so you'll see uh, I'll look it up tomorrow uh, but one thing that I'm doing with it is I'm making a jewelry box for my wife and uh, part of that jewelry box joinery um, is going to have what's called a half lap joint so you can see right here and this piece is going to go right here just like that and um, then when it's all cut it'll half lap over but I haven't um, finished cutting the joint so this one has to have this treatment on it too so what I did basically cut the shoulders with the um, with a handsaw right here cut the shoulders all the way down and then really the best way to do this is to cut several successive cuts all the way down to your um, surface that you want to stop at um, not into it but real real close and then knock them off with a chisel and what you're going to be left with is a real rough surface and then you take the router plane and it goes right along here and it smooths this off and what you end up with is a really really smooth surface um, and an even depth and the other thing you can do like this one here is on the end of the the board you see so if I'm out here trying to do this and the then the plane can actually rock a little bit like this if you're not careful so take a scrap the same size of the wood or another piece of the wood and stick it under there like that so when you're working you can support both sides of the plane and it'll keep your joint even uh, the other the only other tricky thing really is to hold this in place when it so it doesn't move I use a bench hold fast and sometimes some clamps if it's really moving around a lot but basically this is all you do you just pull it across here until it stops cutting when it stops cutting it's at the right depth and you're done if you want to increase the depth you can loosen this turn the thing screwed make it go down or up a little bit and it works great the other thing you can do is use it as a marking gauge especially this blade because it's very very sharp point so you can just take it and drag it along here and mark the piece of wood where you want to just like a marking gauge works well for that um, but again this one works better this cross the grain with that and these other blades are better along the grain but they'll work across grain too if you need to uh, but this is the router plane and I've been around for a long time this just happens to be Stanley's version of it and I love it there's about a million and one other uses for it it's just primarily a joinery plane uh, specialty joinery plane but um, just want to show you one quick use for it and tell you a little bit about this particular plane. Um, anyway, made in the USA. I love it. And y'all have a great night, and hopefully I'll have something again for you soon. Thank you.